You're back again. How you doing? Hey Mike. Afternoon Lord. Thanks for um publicizing this workout over the last eight we has it been eight weeks? No way. Crazy. Hot route went well this morning. I'm gonna um I'm gonna tone down this workout so that I'm uh, able to be all right for tomorrow's final stage of the hot route. Uh, I'm gonna drop my FTP. There we go. Good drop there now, so I'm pretty much right in within myself. I mean, a team time trial around uh, around London. Can't get more exciting than that, can you? Well, you can. Oh, my legs are not happy after this morning. Show up. We're um, massively down on numbers, but there's a uh, England versus Wales rugby match on right now, so I. Uh Like the probably, I, I probably won't. If I'm given the opportunity, um, I can't really afford to keep taking these because um, it's quite hard for me to balance everything. Um, if we had other ride leaders, it might have been easier. But uh, like season three of WTR is coming to it. I don't think I'm even going to be riding most of it because. Yeah, Zwift is still very much a winter thing for me. So, uh, take what we can from it. Yeah, Omloop just finished. The women's race is still on. We've got about 10k left or whatever, so there's lots of stuff going on today. Didn't really plan it, did we? But it is what it is. Definitely lots of things on TV right now. <laughs> I think as well, because people are so used to doing a workout on Zwift and having somebody constantly typing, 
during the workout. Like with with me, they don't get that, do they? They get a YouTube video. And some people maybe don't like that. Like, personally speaking though, I think I've benefited from these workouts massively. And I've also benefited from the racing. So that's like two sessions a week that have been like, you know, obviously racing, racing included in that as a session, that have been very specific. Um, on loop was fantastic again. Which is a good finish. Shout out Jake Stewart. Great sprint to the end. No spoilers. Yeah, good to have the same slot every week, yeah. Although personally, like, half four on a Saturday afternoon is not ideal for me. It hasn't been whole time, really. Saturday evening, I need a bit of downtime. Plus, Saturdays tend to be bigger training days. Uh, I'd rather not be doing a double day, but... First interval incoming. This is going to be the start of the time trial. I feel super wanted. Oh, we got an 11 year old here. That's cool. Future Pro. Uh, we've had a good uptake. We've had some good numbers for these sessions. Not as much as I thought we would. Like I thought the WTRL League, being as worldwide, would have had a far greater impact on people. Maybe you think, maybe people thought it was a bit of a gimmick that these sessions were designed with WTRL, but you know, those of you that have been here and done them, you've kind of taken advantage of the one thing that happens when you race and that's you need specificity and you can't get more specific than this <laughs> you shouldn't be typing I'm writing good job buddy
Yeah, uh, from what I was told, Lord, this was hard to get uh, slots. Um, so if we ever wanted, if we ever wanted future events, it's obviously hard to not clash with something else. We have had some, you know, off the back of those COVID diaries I've been doing for Zwift Insider, we've had some great uh, correspondence with them regarding some future events that are geared towards interval training during Zwift meetups like this um, between me and a couple of others. So, there's a potential for more of this, but uh, I've got to be careful like how many I commit to because, you know, I feel like I'm giving a lot back at the minute. I don't know how it comes across. I feel like I'm giving a lot back with the community to this sort of stuff. And of course the live streams, everything, everything. But. I've still got to remember that my performance comes first and if it starts to you know, cause stress or if I'm struggling to complete workouts because I'm fatigued then I have to rethink things. Like, I'm still very young, and, like, I've got, you know, I can be doing this when I'm 40, 40 years of age, <laughs> doing these fun workouts, but, um, you know, I'm trying to build something for everyone, as well as myself, because when I'm 40, I want to be able to do something, so I'm laying the foundations and those of you that are doing these things and following along, you know, you're going to be potentially part of something. Yeah, we're looking well in the future now. <laughs> Try fifteen. <laughs> this guy's we've collected ten stars already. The thing is, though, I just enjoy. I just enjoy it too much, maybe. <laughs> oh, don't worry about Russia. There'll be a time. It's actually quite nice having a smaller community for these. Like 50 of you in the chat right now. We got 55 in the event. What are your thoughts on tomorrow's hot route? Thank you, David. 
And to reply to your message, I think you know what I'm gonna say. Like, cycling is one of the worst sports in the world for trying to get your head around peak performances. Sometimes you could be aiming for something for like four years, an Olympic cycle. You get to the Olympic Games and you fall flat and things don't work out. And sometimes there's zero explanation for it. But like, you know, take a massive positive from what you've done over the last month or so in preparing for the whole route. Uh, regardless what happens this weekend, you've done a dedicated period of working towards something. And that's very rewarding. Well, at least it is in my opinion. Am I tired from the serious race? Yeah, I am tired. You, you'll do well, Paul. You'll do all right. If you're wondering how I'm still talking, I've lowered my FTP. I've deliberately lowered the intensity of the session so that I've still got a bit of gas in me tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's Alp is going to be a test of itself. I think today and yesterday are no problem compared to tomorrow. I think not only have we got the big climb to begin with, but we've got to deal with We've got to deal with the Alp at the end, which for me is going to basically be exactly the same as that FTP test I did the other night. You know, it's going to be 35 to 40 minutes, and I'm going to be like on death door at the top, and I'll try and ramp it up in the last couple of K. It's all about riding my own race tomorrow, I think. Just like I did today, I'm um, playing the Alpha here. A WKO now, um, after today's effort, Moldo's my FTP is 345. So, it molded it at 338 on Wednesday, and it's now at 345. Apparently. <laughs> My best time up the Alp is 34... 34 11? Is it like... It's in the top 10 of the fastest times up the Alp. Oh, Tyler, I'm going to be racing tomorrow evening. I don't think I'm going to be racing tomorrow morning. I need a bit more recovery. Tyler, <laughs> why do you remember what time I'm racing? <laughs> I'd rather not have people jump on my race just to race with me. I had enough of that with Kirch. Today it worked out that two of the strongest riders were in my race, and I had no idea 
until we actually started to hit the climbs. If you want to ride, I mean, Tyler, you'll know. I'll set up the lighting so you'll know which one it'll be. So, you'll know which one it is. I'll give you enough noise, don't worry. <laughs> you'll have enough noise. It's probably going to be around uh, 5 or 6 p.m. <clears throat> one of those two. <laughs> no, Lord. <laughs> Don't give him any ideas. That's the time. Is you probably don't have to watch the whole thing, just watch the last 20 minutes. <sighs> ah, cheers, Tyler. What zone is this for me? Well, I've, I've lowered my intensity. Can you see 90%? Plus I've lowered my FTP from 338 to like 310. So this is like mainly zone two, zone three for me. That's right, Agnes, yeah. Third, just. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it does indeed. Uh, if Charlie's up for it tomorrow morning, we'll probably end up going for a ride outside just to in the legs. So last day of the day off. She's had the week off so She rotates in two weeks time, so she's in the new hospital then, on a different department. Exciting times. She's really enjoying her new career, which is always good. <laughs> I'm the stay at home bloke.
Okay, let's just say seconds faster than us, okay? That doesn't surprise me. Can you imagine if we were all in the same race? That'd be epic. It'd be epic on the epic. Kurt was 30 seconds slower. Wow. And he probably went full gas, didn't he? Sweaty left hand. One and a half minutes. Yeah, Lord, you're correct there, buddy. Hey, if you feels getting ready for our RGT stage race next weekend. Ha <laughs> lord. Hey Jeff. How's Texas? Have you uh, fixed all the snow problems? I hope it hasn't all melted and caused floods. That's what happens here. So Jeff, this workout is uh, is designed to try and get people ready for Tuesday, which is a WTRL team time trial on this course. So th this workout is kind of simulating that a little bit.
20 minutes ago. Cheers, Jeff. It's good to know. I have a right on in there. How did Mr. Lovett get on this morning? Only eight minutes down. Good stuff. I think he saved himself though, didn't he? Till the end, which is good. I got a, I came within 14 watts of my best ever 14 and a half minute power. And that best was set up during a 10 mile time trial. So, I think I did my best for 14 and a half is 393. So I came within like 16 watts of that. Although, that 14 and a half minute power, it's not really accurate, accurate because my best ever 13 and a half minute power is 420 <laughs> or 415, so it dropped so drastically because I never continued the effort. That was the end of the climb. Still, all good. Oh, you're trying to hold him back, Lord. How am I going to face that climb tomorrow? Um, I'm planning on pacing it like I did the uh, FTP test the other day. So, like, 95% of FTP 
for the first 10 minutes. And then 100% of FTP. And then try to ramp it up from there. On a climb that long, it's nearly always better to negative split. And positive split. In other words, nearly always faster to leave them for the end. I'm still learning a lot about myself, so going all in at the bottom of the Alp without really knowing exactly what I'm capable of doing could be quite uh, risky. I mean, we'll have to see where I stand on the GC when it updates later. I might be worth taking a risk, I don't know. Uh, define the spring rod. Give me a give me a month range. Well, Rasha, technically the climb is basically the same gradient the whole way, isn't it? Like, it's marginal at the bottom. It's marginal. Like, you have to remember as well that it's that change in a pace that will usually kill you off. So, you know, you want to try and remain under control for as long as possible. If you positive split and go hard and then try and settle, like it's only really the more experienced riders are able to go hard again. Or the ones that know their effort, you know. Or the ones that are just fit to, you know, at the top, top level. You know, I, I'm being cautious. Yeah, have a nice long warm up, Al. Have a nice steady warm up. Get that, get those legs moving. Um, anything in May. I've got the um. 600k Audax in May and I think I'm doing the struggle the struggle um, struggle deals that Phil's doing um, although I'm yet to decide what I'm actually going to do with that event um, you know whether I just absolutely drill it for the whole thing or whether I save myself and just nail the climbs in a bit more of a polarised fashion <laughs> I obviously didn't mean it like that Rasha um, it's just it's a far 
safer approach. I mean, you saw, you know, my long FTP test. You know, I still rode at 100% of FTP over 37 minutes, but just in a different way. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm any faster or slower. But I'm getting the best effort out. I don't think there's anything on in here for a load. No. Nothing on in April. May is probably the, the earliest you'll see me at an event. End of June, early July is the Marmot, obviously. If it's still going ahead. I've got to say, I think it will. Because, I mean, the sort of France has been on, so. I've got to be in my best shape ever for that. So, we've got a couple of months to get to that, yeah. Ten more stars to go. Yeah, it won't be happening, Lord. We can't travel there, so... Yeah. Like... At the minute... I can't plan for anything before... Like, basically May. So... Like, the chances of being able to go to... Sacklover in May... I mean, maybe... But is it worth it? It's only a month out then, you know. The thing is with the Sakhalobra thing, you know, we can go the end of October, November, and extend the hill climb season by going out there and hitting uh, Sakhalobra. Do you know what I mean? Where am I on GC? Well, before this morning I was 17th. So maybe I've moved up a little bit now, I don't know. Go on, everybody. Dig in. My legs are a bit weird, Graham. Cheers, though.
I mean, speaking about, you know, after hill climb season, you know, usually after the National Hill Climb Championships, there's like another couple of weeks where, you know, you're still in good form. The weather is actually half decent in November, so there's still more opportunity. So, you know, nothing's, nothing will be finished. Yeah, it's a very long season, you know, nowadays, even for me. You know, I'm technically not racing, you know, like pro teams race, where they've got an actual set racing calendar. Last effort coming in. I think I'm the same as a lot of people, Lord, in that if I'm acclimatised to the heat a little bit, I'm fine. Um, I mean, I definitely feel better in the cooler conditions. But I've been speaking to somebody about the time on KOM and what sort of prep I'll need for that. Obviously that's an altitude, it's hot and cold. Um, so, I was speaking to some people who really helped me with that. Not this year, next year. Oh. Yeah, that's right, Lord. I don't think, um, I think, you know, personally, as long as you don't really exert yourself in the heat, you're all right. You know, but the thing is, when you talk about marginals, percentages, I'd be absolutely, like, on the ragged edge going for a sack of KOM. And if it was in the heat as well, you know, talking about losing a percentage there, maybe, so it really has to be, you know, thought of quite well. Thanks for joining in these. Yeah, to be fair, Mick, that might be something I've got better at now, isn't it? Pleasure. Thank you for the feedback there.
Thank you, Chick Bro. I enjoyed that job, actually. It was actually a really, like, no, you know, because I lowered the intensity, it turned out to be a really good, um, like, block of tempo with some surges, with some so small rests in there in zone two, so all good. <laughs> yeah, the heat was ridiculous on that day, Lord. Like, the the heat was like 34, like 34 degrees. Like, it was a freak heat wave in Europe at that point. Um, and because we were climbing, we were going so slow. Um, you know. Actually, you have to remember, think about it, Lord. Think about it. I did a lot of indoor stuff early last year didn't i but then when we were allowed to go outside and do exercise you know and train and stuff i was training outside and i wasn't doing as much indoors um that's probably the way to supplement it isn't it like i think people are very quick to like slag off indoor riding but then if you look far beyond just the oh zwift like cheats and all the rest of it like there's actually some benefit from riding indoors and you know, getting a sweat on. Ah, uh, cheers, Paul. Thanks, buddy. To be, to be fair, the eight weeks has has flown by. I have to say, it's made lockdown go go by a bit quicker as well. Cheers, lad. Yeah, it, I don't know whether, I mean, you know, it was, it was a hot, it was great, like, I felt, that day, the total stations, I felt, I felt like the bomb, like, I prepared well, obviously, I didn't have anyone to feed me on the side of the road, so I had to stop for water and stuff, which, you know, definitely made me lose time, but if you look at the Strava flyby, which is, like, really useful, I was, I was picking people off during the day, up until the point where the heat started to kick in, so the sun came up, and it was on your back, and, um, you know, yeah, everything just started to fall apart then. Um, because I'd kept on top of my drinking and fueling up to that point. But do you know when it gets, like, so hot that you just can't drink enough? And, you know, the people who had the support that day to, um, to have people feeding on the side of the road, um, you know, and had bottles, like, every half an hour or whatever... Like, that makes, like, a hell of a difference. Um, so, you know, we'll get Charlie out there this year. She can take some annual leave. <laughs> get Charlie out there this year. Um, you know, the band of climbers, to be fair, like, they were riding the event as well, so they couldn't uh, they couldn't do anything. But um, still, like, the opportunity, they gave me the opportunity, and it was, it was brilliant. Like, it was well worth going. So, so yeah. Happy days. Happy days. I better change this back now. So we're saying we're gonna go for a three. Let's go to three forty. Save. There we are. Thanks, Ian. Enjoy your food. I'm gonna put my feet up now because we've been a bit busy this afternoon. Moving a mattress, getting rid of a mattress, and uh, did you did you not miss? We were talking about it earlier, Mick. Um, after the effort this morning, my modelled FTP has gone from three hundred and thirty-eight to three hundred and forty. I did do three hundred and eighty watts for fourteen minutes this morning, by the way. So. You know. I know the FTP result was different. It was 338, wasn't it? Was it 338? Yeah, 337. Um... 
yeah, back to plus spots every couple of days. I wish. Um, no, not quite, not quite as good as that. Um, but you know, so far so good. Like that, that really helped the curve. Well, actually, saying that, I think the only reason why it's been modelled differently now is so I did the FTP test, then I did a one minute maximal effort and a three minute maximal effort, which you can see on Strava. I did those like two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Um, then I did a, a five and a half minute effort yesterday on the volcano finish. So all of these have been like gently nudging the curve up. And then today I did a 12 minute effort. So the ground is getting longer. <laughs> One, three, five and a half, uh, 14 today. Um, which has also pushed the graph up as well. So the one minute was 605. Um, the one minute was 605. Well, I'm giving away now what the next video is going to be that, that I'm going to put out on um, on Monday night. Uh, it's, a, it's a fabulous piece of filming from Charlie. We stuck a GoPro to the back of the car and uh, I basically tried to hang on to the back of the car for one minute climb. Um, so that's... Uh, that's gonna look really good on, on video. Like I, I was blown away by it. Um, so yeah, the one minute was 602, 603 watts. The three and a half minutes was 445 watts. The five and a half minute yesterday was uh, 318, uh, sorry, 418, something like that. Uh, and then Today I did like 380 watts for 14 minutes. So they're like pushing, do you know what I mean? So tomorrow now we're gonna have like an Alp, which is gonna be like 35 to 40 minutes. Um, it won't be a, it won't be sub 34, that's for sure. Uh, Cause that was six watts per kilo. Um, so I think tomorrow, you know, we might well be able to beat what we did at the FTP test the other day. But of course that was for 37 and a half minutes. So if I tried to, rep if I even got close to repeating that, there would be something seriously wrong because <laughs> it will be after five days of back to back riding with efforts every day and it'll be at the end of a stage of the hot route. So either I don't fatigue <laughs> or my FTP is improving every day. <laughs> um, I think it's, I think it's a bit of both, but I think it's mainly down to me not fatiguing. Um, I don't think I fatigue as much as most people. Um, because of the racing and like my training history um, and my age as well of course that's a, that's a I have good recovery strategies <laughs> the funny thing is do you know they tell you to like well they don't tell you but they say you know you refuel in the first 30 minutes after a workout um, you have an ice bath you wear compression leggings you stretch, uh, you hydrate. I gotta be honest, because there's research that says, you know, you shouldn't do some of those because they harm the stimulus. They speed up recovery so quick, potentially, or they, they have the effect that, that you lose some of the actual, the muscle breakdown that you're supposed to have to then cause, uh, you know, an, an adaption. Um, they cause you to adapt. So like my, like the only time I wear compression stuff on my legs is when I'm in the middle of a stage race or whenever I've been traveling to and from races. Um, I never, the recovery strategies have never been like 
not because of that like not because there's research to say that you know you may need to just not do recovery strategies to help your body actually have more inflammation so that it can recover stronger i'm not explaining that very well but i think you know what i mean um i don't do it because of that uh most of the time it's because i can't be bothered um but when i do do it and when i am bothered it seems to make a bigger difference um it's not what i'm not bothered that doesn't sound right like it's like it almost feels like that's not what i mean that, that, that makes it sound like i'm not um serious about my recovery i am serious about my recovery but for someone who like for me i spend most of my time either riding my bike or like sitting down like physically resting then recovery doesn't seem to be a you know such a priority because technically i am resting but for people who have like you know uh full-time job or something that's quite laborious labor intensive recovery strategies could probably benefit you more than they do me um so <laughs> cheers peter sorry i uh missed your message yeah. i was too busy rambling um Thanks, Lord. Yeah, pants, as in leggings. Compression, compression pants. Compression leggings. <laughs> um, all right, well, it, it's been wonderful, and we have to end now, but I'm going to have to think about backpedal meetup rides and such in the next coming weeks. Um, still don't know how Scott is, which is a bit worrying. Uh, yeah, I'm taking care of your apartment. Yeah. <laughs> if only you knew, Lord. <laughs> um, make a sweet potato fries. That is it. Yeah, I think we got sweet potato fries tonight, actually. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, see you tomorrow evening for the final stage of the Hort Route. I'd, uh, <laughs> right in the stack. Uh, I'd appreciate if you could cheer me on there tomorrow night. That would uh, be really helpful, especially if the GC turns out to be like pretty tight now for the top 10. Um, obviously, I'm going to give it everything. And then Monday evening, we'll have that cool video of me doing a one minute effort for gas. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.